Slum 1200 GGI Mob, and I'm back. Slum 1200 GGI Mob, and I'm back. Slum 1200 GGI Mob, and I'm back. Back, back. Slum 1200 GGI mob shit and I'm back. So we gonna be going to North Carolina with it. Well, this is where the incident happened at. So we gonna be going to North Carolina with it. And we gonna be talking about James Jordan, the father of Michael Jordan. Long live James Jordan. Now joined by James Jordan, father of Michael. Now James, Michael has told you this is their year, hadn't he? Well, you know, Michael says that they've gotten so close this year and there's no assurance that they're going to get this close again, so he's certainly like to go all the way. So for all the parents out there, was there one point when you thought that Michael was going to be as great a player as he is? No, there was no way you could tell. You know, I always thought Michael would play baseball. Of course, he had that year that he, he grew so much, and it's just been a joy watching him develop into the player that the world can see today. All right, hopefully we can watch him all the way through the playoffs. I hope so. If he do, I'll be right there. I'll be his number one fan all the way through. I so on July 23rd, 1993, while returning home after spending the day playing golf, Jordan allegedly tired from being on the road so late, pulled his Lexus over to rest. About an hour into his drive, he stopped in a parking lot of Equality Inn at the intersection of US 74 and I-95 South of Lumberton, of Lumberton, North Carolina. Investigators say Jordan was shot dead napping in his car by a highway near Lumberton, North Carolina. Authorities have recovered what could be a key piece of evidence, an NBA championship ring Michael Jordan gave his father. Mr. Jordan uh, had pulled off the side of the road uh, to obviously to rest for a while and he was shot to death while in his car and was taken to the state of South Carolina and placed into the swamp where he was found. Some say his car was moved into the parking lot from the side of the road later. Larry Martin Demerer would testify that he and Daniel Andre Green spotted the car Michael had recently purchased for him. Four people have been arrested for stripping and stealing the Elder Jordan's car found last week in Fayetteville, North Carolina. None of those charged are said to be murder suspects. Jordan's body was found August 3rd. The Jordan family has released a statement saying they are shocked by the sudden loss. They're withholding further comment while the investigation is underway. A red Lexus XC400 with the North Carolina license plate that read UNC0023. Green shot Jordan to death while he slept in his car and then stole a vehicle. His body was found on August 3rd in a swamp in McCole, South Carolina. As his body was in a state of extreme decomposure, Jordan was not identified until August 13th with the help of dental records provided by the family dentist. His body had previously been cremated by the coroner due to the lack of storage space, but his jaw and hands were preserved for identification and later mailed to Michael Jordan. Boy, that's cool his vacation in California, James Jordan's body was discovered in a river in South Carolina with a gunshot wound to the chest. Dennisville, South Carolina has been positively identified as the body of Mr. James Jordan. Authorities announced today that James Jordan's body was found in a creek between North and South Carolina. The body had been unidentified for a week and a half until police found Jordan's car. The windows bashed, tires and stereo missing, the vanity plates gone. Finally, late last night, police put the pieces together. We processed a car last night for Leighton Prince also for aluminum all the car to see if there's any presence of blood. Those tests were negative. Using dental records, North and South Carolina authorities made the connection between the car and James Jordan. Jordan had suffered a single gunshot wound to the chest. 
probable cause to indicate that uh, Mr. Jordan was uh, was uh, abducted and transported uh, across uh, state lines, and we're investigating this on the premise that uh, that uh, a kidnapping had occurred. Green and Demery took other items from the car, including two NBA championship rings given to Jordan by his son. Green and Demery made several calls from Jordan's cell phone, and as a, as a result, were quickly captured. As the two teenagers arrived for their appearance in Robinson County Court, North Carolina investigators said they had concrete evidence linking Daniel Green and Larry Demery to the murder of James Jordan. After questioning the suspects, deputies said they found a National Basketball Association all-star ring in a plastic bag, hidden in a rural part of the county. Michael Jordan apparently had given the ring to his father. These uh, two defendants did have, or was with, uh, Mr. Jordan at one point in time, because that we do know where that ring come from. It did uh, belong or was in possession of Mr. Jordan. According to authorities, Jordan was killed along this stretch of North Carolina Highway in the early morning hours of July 23rd. Driving to Charlotte, he apparently had pulled over to rest and was shot in his car. Police say the teenagers dumped his body in a South Carolina swamp about 60 miles away. After their arrest, Demery said that they had planned only to tie up their victim and that Green pulled the trigger for no reason. Both were convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. The accusations was based only on Demery's testimony. Green did not testify. Defense counsel Woodbury Bowen said Demery had everything to gain by lying that Green was the shooter and that Green's testimony put Demery closer than he earlier admitted. Jordan was buried at Rockfish AME Church in Teachy, North Carolina on August 15, 1993. For Michael Jordan and his family, it was a day of finality. The funeral for his father was a small private gathering in the small town of Teachy, North Carolina, the area where James Jordan grew up as the son of a sharecropper. He was a loved father. He loved everybody. How was Mrs. Jordan? She was real sad, very lovely. But she did real good. She held up real good. Were there lots of tears inside? Yes, there was a lot of tears. The service came just hours after two suspects were arrested for his murder. Larry Demery and Daniel Green, both 18 years old, are now in custody in the Robeson County, North Carolina jail. As this matter unfolds, you will find that, this is, that what happened to Mr. Jordan was the kind of random violence that all the public are concerned and, and afraid of. Jordan was shot in the chest with a 38 caliber pistol on a service road along this stretch of Interstate 95 in North Carolina. Authorities say he was returning to his home near Charlotte late at night when he pulled off the road to rest. These uh, men were waiting to uh, commit a robbery and uh, Mr. Jordan just happened to be the, uh, the victim. The murder suspects are friends who authorities say have run afoul of the law before. The two suspects do have both have criminal records. Jordan's car was stripped. Several other people have been arrested for vandalizing the vehicle. Police say they were helpful in providing leads, but were not involved in the murder. James Jordan was his superstar son's biggest booster. He often traveled with Michael, serving as advisor, protector, and friend. Initially, the death was being investigated as a kidnapping, leading to speculation that the murder may have been tied to the Jordans' trouble with gambling and business debts. Now it appears James Jordan might be just another national statistic, a chilling sign that random violence can silence anyone, even the father of a national hero. So Michael Jordan at this time will have some things going on legally where he would be, he would be put on, on the stand and questioned for gambling, where he owed, I think he paid like $57,000 to somebody that he used to shoot golf, you know, go play golf with or whatever. And they was on him about that. They made him testify about it and everything. So.
He's known for his amazing plays on the basketball court, but tonight Michael Jordan is making headlines in court. Under oath, Jordan is testifying about his well-publicized wagering on the golf course. He takes the stand in a drug and money laundering trial of a former friend. Jordan describes the gambling habits that got him in trouble, and he reveals why he tried to disguise a $57,000 debt payment as a loan. Channel 2's Jay Levine is in Charlotte, North Carolina with the latest. Michael Jordan's day in court was a short one. He spent a lot less time on the witness stand than he does on the bench at Bulls games. And that's not very much. But the few questions he did answer shed new light on his gambling debts and how they mounted so rapidly. Michael, why did you take the on the Leaving the court after testifying, it was clear Jordan couldn't wait to put it behind him. Fast. Normally, he's patient with reporters, but there'd be no post-game interviews today. On the witness stand, he looked uncomfortable when he talked about the high-stakes golf matches, which led to checks like these. More than $100,000 lost in golf and card games. What were the stakes, he was asked in court today? Anywhere from $20 Nassau to $1,000 Nassau. $1,000 Nassau means $1,000 for the first nine holes, $1,000 for the second nine holes, and $1,000 for the full 18. Doubling the bets when you get behind. It adds up fast. And even Bowler, when the story broke, was sympathetic. He always had a good heart, respected every man as being a man, and the gambling situation, the only thing that I can say about that is Michael have to deal with whatever he feel is right or whatever he feel is wrong. At first, both Jordan and Bowler claimed the money was a loan for the Charlotte area pro to build a driving range. Today, both admitted that wasn't true. Jordan describing the $57,000 check as a combination of golf losses to Bowler and poker losses Bowler paid others for him. And Bowler testified today it was he who suggested to Jordan that they call the check a loan, if anyone asked. Jordan was mobbed by reporters when he arrived and when he left. But it was up to the first father of basketball to explain what his famous son was going through. The only painful thing about it was the fact that people, irregardless of how it comes out, people's going to look at him and say, well, you know, he's a gambler, this, that, and the other. And, uh, you know, really what he did it does, goes on every day on every golf course in America. A lot of people was talking about maybe the mafia deleted his, his father because he owed the mafia some money or whatever. But it was really just like a random act, something that just that just happened. You know what I'm saying? And from reading that, it, it kind of seemed like it was premeditated because they say they seen a car that Michael bought him. So how did they even know that he had a red Lexus? You feel what I'm saying? So that was real, like, sketchy and kind of funny to me, you know. The two teenagers did not set out specifically to murder James Jordan, but that he just happened to be their victim when they went looking for someone to rob. The suspects apparently made several calls from the telephone in Jordan's luxury car. That's how detectives tracked them down. In court, Demery and Green said very little, but Demery, at one point, appeared to be weeping. This was merely a preliminary appearance. Their pleas of guilt or innocence will come later. The slaying perhaps occurred at the hands of third parties, not Mr. Demery, not Mr. Green. So are you saying that, that your, your client and Mr. Green may have stumbled across a corpse? There may very well be some evidence that that would be the case. Yes, ma'am. Word is Michael is planning a press conference Saturday morning at 8 a.m., the first time he will directly address the public since the murder of his father. I haven't really made uh, uh, my definite plans for the rest of the summer. Uh, I think this was just more or less uh, a testing thing for me to come and see how well I can respond again for the summer. And uh, right now, you know, it's, everything is tender for my schedule from this point on, but uh, I just wanted to come and see how uh, I could react in these circumstances again. Do you haven't considered preseason at this point either? Basketball? I haven't even thought about basketball. I didn't even think about basketball be before all this happened. So uh, you know, right now it's just the summer and relax and enjoying the company that I am in right now. I was in a lot of times where I didn't know if I was going to make it here. And uh, I know I've committed myself, but uh, under the circumstances, uh, I really didn't know. And I knew some of the people, and Rose gave me a list of the people that were going to be here. And, you know, it's good people to be around especially when you need that, that support from now. We're, we're together, we bonded, and uh, naturally it's tough for anybody to swallow. 
James Jordan was Michael Jordan's biggest fan and trusted confidant. He had been missing for three weeks, but business trips often took him away, so his family didn't worry. Michael is on vacation in California. His security staff is already in North Carolina to help in the investigation. In Chicago, teammates mourn the elder Jordan. He's just a great person to be around, and he's you know, always had you know, something to say. I was very funny, and he always made us laugh. And, uh, he's just a great individual. Everyone just cared for him so much. Uh, he's like part of the one of the, he's just one of the guys. I mean. Through all of Michael Jordan's successes on the court and in his promotions, and through the tough times of gambling accusations this season, what friends remember is that James Jordan was always there for his son. Long live James Jordan, man. You know what I'm saying? May the peace, mercy, and blessings of our Lord be upon him. You feel me? Y'all get in that comment section. Hit that like button. Make sure the notifications turned on. Hit that subscribe button and stay plugged. Slum 1200 GGI mob shit. <laughs> I ride around with the mob that's a stick. 33 shots in the Glock that's a dick. That's a dick. Hit my drum, call that bit 50 cent. Hit my drum on the Drake, it's a hit. It's a hit. Ain't no question, you play, you get hit. Pull up and let the bitch pray to that stick. Then I go pray, ask to save you for strength. I mean, created a savior, I'm him. Shout out the gates, we break winners like him. I told my son, I'ma get us a M. I'ma keep running, I do it for them. No DJ Kelly, but I'm trying to win. Stand on that business, yeah, I'll get it in. They second line behind you and your kid. Riding that farm, you know that it's tennis. I got a hundred, my broke out the fence. Born in the slums, I was raised in the trenches. It be your nigga turn state as a witness.